Hey, this is Zero at Review Zone HD, and I'm bringing you guys a review for Midnight Club Los Angeles Complete Edition. Now, the original Midnight Club Los Angeles released in October of 2008, and the game does contain both trophy support and online multiplayer. The Complete Edition version that I'm reviewing also includes the DLC that adds around 30% more to the game world map, 12 new online maps, 100 new single player races to bring the total to just over 300, and new vehicles such as the Lowriders and SUVs which brings the game's total vehicle count to just over 60. I had several of my subscribers recommend this title and while this game does have a few issues I found a lot to like about this one. Let's go ahead and get into the review. There was quite a few graphical issues with this one. For starters, the frame rate drops at random times, and when it does drop, it makes sure that you notice it because the game slows down considerably. Another issue I came across was during a high speed race, I had a set of cars at an intersection actually loaded in the game right in front of me, but I only saw that happen once. I also noticed a few issues with some of the actual textures, such as popping and flickering, and the game did freeze up on me twice during my few days playing it. The cars themselves don't look very smooth as they have somewhat rigid lines around them that make them a little jagged on closer inspection. And with all the negative out of the way, before I purchased this title, I had the impression I wasn't going to like it because it just looks like a Grand Theft Auto clone and I didn't particularly like the graphics from Grand Theft Auto. But videos of this game really don't do it justice as this game looks really nice when you're actually playing it and its visual style of how it pans in and out of the city when you start races is nothing short of spectacular. The day and night cycles and how it affects the environment and the lighting is also truly impressive, especially the way they use the sunlight and the shadows. For racing titles, I generally prefer mountainsides, creative locations, and open highways, but the city on here was a real treat to race through, so no complaints with the environment. Now, I actually listen to all types of music and I do mean everything, but I really hated the soundtrack on this one. It does have a few good songs that I loved, but the rest of it I just found either boring, uninteresting, or annoying. There's a lot of electronic and techno tracks, and the majority of those just don't feel like racing music. A lot of the rap and hip hop songs have lyrics that have to do with racing in the song, but the songs just weren't that good with the exception of a few off the West Coast playlist and one or two off the hip hop tracks. I know music comes down to an individual's preferred tastes, and maybe there are some out there that may really enjoy the music on here, but to me it just didn't cut it for a racing title that could have you dropping anywhere between 60 to 80 hours to obtain a platinum trophy and complete the game. While I didn't like the music, I absolutely loved the voice acting. The dialogue was a bit dumbed down, but the voice actors really put some effort into recording their lines. When you first cut the game on it has the default controls with the right analog stick being the gas accelerator which was not only somewhat awkward but a bit surprising. It does however allow you to quickly swap to the standard R2 button layout that was thankfully an option in the menus. Now the actual handling of the cars on here for this type of eraser was absolutely perfect. They couldn't have done a better job if they had tried. The drifting in particular really stands out. It feels as if it has some force behind it. If you hit a turn hard enough, you can even drift without hitting the brakes. The animations and the feel of the actual drift make this game worth playing. It's just that good. If you draft behind another racer, you can hear your nitrous start to spool up like a supercharger. And between the way the game uses the drifting, drafting, and nitrous effect, the racing was just an absolute treat. Which is a good thing because this game has so much to do, even after playing for 10 hours, you will barely scratch the surface. The customization options for designing your car is pretty deep, and you can even swap the colors of the interior of your cars. However, the game is lacking in the performance parts and tuning category, as you pretty much just have a menu that you check boxes to add a part, and that's pretty much all there is to it.
I know I focused a lot on the negative things in this game, but don't take that as I'm saying this is a bad game. This is actually an extremely deep, fulfilling title if you have the time to invest in it. There's tons of vehicles to purchase and customize, and the customization in creating a vehicle to look exactly as you want it is half the fun of playing this one. The way the game uses the police to chase you down and monitor the city was pretty creative and added some extra excitement to an already solid experience. If you're looking for a more casual arcade racer, there's several to choose from that may do a few things better, but there are very few, if any, that offer the type of complete package this game offers. There were times playing this game that it closely resembled scenes from The Fast and the Furious, and even some of the racing elements resemble parts found in those movies. Even though I can't speak very highly of its soundtrack, if you're looking for a racing game to spend a vast amount of time with, I would recommend this title, as this one has enough quality content in its single player and even online modes to rival even Burnout Paradise. Anyways, this is Zero at Review Zone HD, and thanks for stopping by.